All right, so this is the blob brush option in Illustrator. And I got to the options for it. It's very important to be able to get to the options by double clicking on the tool. And at the top, you have a fidelity. So it's a slider between the accuracy and the smoothness, just like in Photop. And I'm gonna move it mostly towards smooth. Maybe even all the way towards smooth, just so you can see. Then this is what's great if you have a tablet. You'll have the ability to set this, the size to pressure sensitivity. And then I can set it to different point sizes, which are different than pixel sizes, because points are, are what's used in vectors. And then whatever size you choose, you want to then make the variation that large as well. So it can go between. Then for everything else, you don't need to worry about it. So that's maybe a little too big. It's bigger than a pencil eraser, right? So let me set it to be a little bit smaller in its size. And that will automatically take down my variation. And now I can zoom in. And I can ink. And you can see I'm pretty jittery. But then when I'm finished, it's going to smooth it out. See how smooth that is? Ridiculously smooth. And it'll smooth out my curves. And it does just what that Photo P tool does, but because it's not within a browser and not on my computer while I'm doing like two different recording programs at the same time. It's just running a whole lot easier without slowing everything down. If I needed to, though, I think Photo P, if I didn't have all these other programs running in order to, to do the class at the same time, I think Photo P with the smoothing on would give me a very similar cleanliness. But yeah, you just... It's just too much lag at the moment. Okay, so you can see that gives me a pretty clean kind of ink line, but that's like a brush pen with lots of variation. What if instead of that, so it takes a little while to figure out what you want. I want this to be just really clean looking. And I want less variation. I can actually make it fixed. So it's always, let's say, seven, seven point. And then no matter what, it will always be that width. That might even be a little thick. Let me make it six. Now, if I needed something even uh, more detailed than between these two points, Uh oh, what's going on? There we go. What I could do is actually just make the uh, the image underneath larger, right? Because remember, resolution doesn't matter here. And this will give me a very kind of uniform look. We're not going for perfection like our logos, where every shape is really, really perfect with an illustration. And it definitely depends on what kind of illustration you're doing. But we want the line art to be clean and easy to understand. So I think for a lot of this chicken, I'm going to use this. Ah, oh, but you see it smoothed it out too much there. So now I might go to 
in the next setting. Where I can follow the back of the chicken and it should keep some of that curve. Yeah, this is a good setting now. It's kind of fixing my wobble. And you might make changes to your design at this phase. Inking often improves your sketch, so you're having to make stronger decisions. Now, what's the big benefit of doing this in Illustrator as opposed to Photoshop or doing it as a vector as opposed to a raster? Well, that means that this line art will be perfectly clean at any resolution I like. So it's not tied to a certain resolution. But if you're doing it as a raster, just make sure your resolution is at least 10 inches by 350. And that will be big enough to get good prints from. Now, actually, by making it a fixed brush like this, you could do all of this with your trackpad or with a mouse. Because the only thing the uh, tablet does is allow you to do pressure sensitivity. But now I'm drawing it with my trackpad. Just on my laptop. Now, when you're inking by hand, by, by fixing the, uh, the point size of your brush, and you can do that in Photoshop too, or in Photo P, as opposed to making it pressure sensitive to size, that's like using a technical pen with a fixed width. Whereas using the pressure sensitivity brush, that's more like using a, a calligraphy pen. Because I can still thicken lines just by going over them more, more than once. But, but it's only ever going to put out one line weight at a time. But it is nice and comforting how it smooths out my lines as I go. Now I get to get into some of the gross, uh, drippy stuff. For my spot illustration. So this is my preferred way to digitally ink. But it's not, it's also not the only way you can do it within Illustrator. So I'm going to take a break from this for a second. I think I will want to finish it up this way, so I'll come back. But it's going pretty fast, right? Pretty clean. So I'm going to save it. You always want to name So the cool thing about the blob brush is whenever I add to it, it just adds to the same path. So the only time you get a separate path is when something is free floating.
but this is all one big path because every time I add a little bit more to it, it just becomes one more big kind of cut out of paper. So it's a nice way to, to work on, on digital line art. Okay, now I'm gonna minimize this and then show you another way, right? So let's take this in Photoshop. So this is a clean pencil sketch. It's before I kind of zombified it, but what a lot of people will do because they want to do all the things that you can do digitally with inking, they want to be able to erase and correct and refine, they'll try to do it all in a really clean pencil sketch. And then they'll just go into Photoshop and adjust the levels to try to make it look like clean black ink. But the problem is because pencil is a dry media, you know, it's shavings of graphite, you're always going to get pretty broken edges from it. So this is really pushing the shadows and the highlights, right? But you can see like the colors get really pushed. So let me take all the color out. And so let's say I have this and it looks okay, but there's obviously, it's not perfect yet. It's not good enough to just start coloring behind and call it finished line art. So what can I do? This is another way you can use Illustrator. I can save it just as a flattened image. I can even just do it as a JPEG to my desktop. And I usually call these test images because these are transitional. So I'm going to see how this works out. This would be the same as if I if I inked it and then erased all the pencil and then scanned it or took a photo of it. You get something that looks pretty good, but maybe not as clean as you want. So Illustrator can help you clean it up further. So what I do is I find that image on my desktop and then I'm going to open it with Illustrator. So this is a new file in Illustrator. So it opens up this raster file. So if I zoom in, I can see the pixels, right? And it actually doesn't matter if it's high resolution or not. And now I want to click on it with the large selection tool. And there's no option for this in the browser-based vector program. So this is just an Illustrator. But once you click on it, you'll get these options at the top that say image trace. You do the drop down, and you're going to say, um, black and white logo right and then you want to see the special image trace panel for the different options so blink and you missed it because this is previewing for us it's converting that pencil into a clean vector right and it's missing some things but it does a really nice job kind of tracing. And I can play with it with all these settings, especially the advanced settings. So you always want to look at the image trace panel. You always want to click on advanced and you always want to say ignore white because we only want the black shapes. We don't want the white shapes. We just want the black cutout. We want the line art. And then I can play with how sensitive it is. You know, allow more or allow less. Um, you can say how many paths you want. I can say fewer paths. That might smooth it out even more. But then it gets kind of chunky. You can say how many corners I want. This looks about right, but I can try. More corners. Yeah, that looks nice. How noisy is... little debris how much is allowed and then you simply say expand once you like your settings and it turns it into a vector complete with anchor points and it says a fill path right so now i can use my favorite tool the pencil tool and redraw the things that are a little bit wrong 